Okay, and welcome back to part three of our um, modeling of this pencil. We have modeled it, we have unwrapped it, and now it is time to texture. So what I did in the spare time was basically just fixed some of these UVs up, and then when I ended up um, t finishing that, I went on, uh, you know, you, I went on cgtextures.com and various other uh, websites to find some nice wood textures and I found a really nice one that I think is going to work <clears throat> for our um, pencil here so I'm just going to open this up and uh, see what we got here so obviously you know there's a little mark here so we can probably just get rid of that but at the same time though you can also you know this doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a straight yellow wood pencil I mean we can always manipulate it to where you know we want it to be a uh, you know, a pencil that has little cracks on it, or if there is a texture out there, like let's say blue or you know green, or if you want to put something fancy on it as well, you can always do that. So don't think to yourself that you're limited to just doing you know the basic yellow one. You know, you can always go outside the box with it and whatnot. So the first thing I did was take this picture in, and then the second thing I'm going to probably do is see if I can select one of these textures. Before I do that, let me just fit that to screen here. And then as I am doing this, I could possibly, you know, select maybe this piece right here and use that as my uh, texture. So, and we could probably do that. So, to do that, um, for starters, um, in order to select this kind of object, what I like to do first is basically duplicate the layer by any means. So, you can do a background layer. So if you want to, you know, if you make a mistake, you can always go back to the original copy. So what I'll do is, uh, first I will get the clone stamp tool, and then I'm going to basically just press the Alt key and then click on anywhere I believe would have the same sort of texture that can overwrite it, <clears throat> that can erase it, so watch. So now it's gone. So basically all you have to do is just have that crosshair uh, click and then you can erase it. And then for this area, you basically just kind of select the same area and then just kind of go over it. And there you go. It's pretty simple, not really difficult. Um, and then for this one area, you can just kind of go off like that. Maybe go a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so now I have my wooden piece I want to select. So what I do now is get the rectangular marquee tool. And if you don't know what the key, the um, the quick fast key it's M just to make your life a little bit easier so now what we do is we're just gonna select this entire thing so press shift to hold down so you can kinda get that smooth you know perfect rectangular shape and then let go of shift and then you can kinda select it as you go so about there is pretty good so once you have that settled and whatnot. So then once you have this, then you can just select it and then do a control C and then go back to your uh, UV uh, layer and then you can paste it on there like that. So, but before we do that though, we have to at least do a little thing. We have to do a few things. See, this is your background layer. <clears throat> so basically you just unlock that, double click, and then name this UVs and then you're going to then bring in your object. So, but before you do that though, make sure you're on the screen level. And then uh, basically control V, and now you have your selected um, texture that you got from here. So now we're going to have to, I guess, you know, manipulate it. So do a control, command C, and then just bring this all the way up so it's perfectly aligned. So let's see if we can get that a little bit more more aligned. That's pretty good. And whatnot. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay, so now once you have that, then you just bring it over here. Make sure this is your uh, pencil um, base layer. I don't know. You can name it whatever you want. I'll just name it 
pencil base for now and then just do another screen so you can see what exactly what you're going to be manipulating it to sizing it out to all right so just kind of drag this up because this area right here is going to be where the end of the pencil is <clears throat> so just drag that as close as you can to the edges bring that down a bit and then see if you have to make any more adjustments alright um... let's see looking pretty good, maybe the top could use a little more okay so that's pretty good <clears throat> so now keep in mind you're not necessarily limited to this this color I mean you can go in here and play around with it so let's say uh, I don't know auto tune or something <clears throat> now that kind of ruins it so Let's do a Command Z and redo, undo it. We can kind of just play around auto contrast, auto color. But if you want to do it yourself, you can go in here to image adjustments and play around with it. So let's go to color balance and uh, let's see what we can go with. Uh, we can go with like a nice yellow color if you wanted to make it yellow. You know, you're not necessarily limited to just that. You can make this a red pencil if you want. You can make this, you know, whatever. I mean, you can make this purple, bright red, so, you know, you're not just limited to that. But for my sake, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, see what I can do with it as far as color-wise. So, um, I don't want to do a red pencil. I think it's a little boring. Maybe we can try something like, eh, maybe a red pencil. I don't know, like, not like the worst thing, so, I don't know. We'll just, we'll just take it as it is, so. All right, so we have ourselves our red pencil, <clears throat> our red texture. So obviously now we're still not done, but if you want to see an example of what it's going to look like, you can just save it off and then go back and forth to Maya and then see if you can manipulate it in any way. So you don't have to just do it all in one and then go back and say, oh, I don't really care for it, and then having to go back to Photoshop and then redo it all. So this is just a convenient way. So to pro properly save this, we're going to go to File, Save As, and then we're going to basically write this down as a, um, first it's a po PSD file, so we'll do a Diffuse Pencil, because it's going to be our Diffuse Map. So we'll do, for the sake, a Diffuse. We'll save that first. Okay, so now we can go back to this file if we make a mess up because the next thing we're going to do is save it again, but this time we're going to save it as a Targa, because that's what we're going to import into Maya. So, save that again. Save. Okay, so now let's hide Photoshop. Go back right into Maya. <clears throat> and uh, let's see what we can do. So let's get rid of this texture here, this uh, checkerboard. Okay, and there's our checkered, so let's get rid of that. We'll name this pen we'll name this diffuse pencil. Then we're going to break the connection. So right click on color, break connection right there, and there you go. So let's click on back that on. File. Find our then we're gonna go in and select our uh, uh, diffuse, and this is the target. And there you go. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. Ah, pretty good, pretty good. Um, we could probably go in there and make some adjustments. But so far, in reality, it's pretty pretty good. You know, we could easily make this into a yellow pencil. You know, you are not limited to just doing a red. But for my sake, I'm just going to keep it keep it as it is. And maybe I'll go ahead and change it when I have more time. So, okay. So, I'm just going to cover in this video the... Uh, I'm just going to cover this, and then I will go ahead and do the eraser uh, part later. I'll do that for another one, because I don't want to have to waste time finding some objects, like metal objects, so I can use it. So, all right. So, now let's go back, jump back into Photoshop, and uh, let's do the same thing for this. So, you know, let's, we can put that right there as well. So, let's do a... Um, duplicate so let's go to layer and then duplicate layer okay and then we're going to select this bring it over here 
And it's about right where we want it. It's a little, little off. In fact, what we could do is just, you know, uh, oh, well, I guess we can just keep it as it is um, and whatnot, duplicate image. So, oh dear, what the heck happened? Just going a little nuts here. I don't know what the heck happened. Uh, oh, this is just, oh, I made a copy of it. Oops, sorry. Alright, let's do this again. Duplicate. There we go. Alright, now let's just bring this over here. Just kind of find our way toward it. So, just kind of basically... Basically, is that cooperating here? Okay. All right. Well, we still gotta fix that, so I'm just going tweak that up a bit. All right. If this is giving you problems, then what you could do is just exit out of here, and then you can just select this again. There you go. And then, I don't know, color-wise, it doesn't matter. It's okay. We can always fix that. Because, I don't know, sometimes duplicating is not necessarily the most reasonable tactic because, well, not really necessarily. It's just a matter of it. Cause sometimes it doesn't work for you. Like that just doesn't want to doesn't want to cooperate. <laughs> okay. So, we got that pretty much all set. Um, now let's just go back to this, pencil, base 2, rename it, and then let's make this into a screen so we can see what we're trying to measure to. That's pretty good right there, and just kind of bring that up a bit. Alright, so we got ourselves a decent looking pencil here, so let's go into our Q and saturation, just kind of change it to whatever color we wanted it. Or what we could do is just change it to here. So there we go. Okay, and then just save it off. We'll save as our Targa. Now make sure when you save it, you overwrite it, and then you have to go in here and save it off again. So otherwise, it'll save as a PSD, and then it will ruin, and then it'll screw it up. So let's jump back into Maya, obviously. Go to our, oops, delete the history. Go back into here, and then reload it. And there we go. We got ourselves uh, pretty good. All right, uh, just gotta fix that. That's no problem. So what we can do is go back into Photoshop. Obviously, we still got a few more spaces than what we need. That not necessary. See, I don't know why. I don't know. Just problem with Photoshop sometimes is when you're trying to manipulate a photograph. It doesn't want to cooperate. <clears throat> so what we could do is just do it manually to... There we go. That's better. Alright, now let's save it off. Back to our Targa file. Make sure you save it as a Targa. Save. Replace. 24-bit. Let's go back into here and then reload. Okay, there we go. Uh, it's still a little, still a little off, but that's okay. We can fix that later. But other than that, though, this is what we've got so far. So it's pretty nice, pretty self, pretty uh, easy as far as just texturing it all out. I mean, it just depends on how you unwrap it. It's all really matters. So, but yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the base. Of it. And what I'm probably going to do is now I'm going to um, go into Photoshop, maybe add in some little marks in between it, like maybe there's a like somebody 
added in a uh, you know something somebody added in or it got, there's a crack in it something like that in fact what we could do you know with a lot of pencils um, that I've noticed in fact I'll even show you is is it has this on it right here so if you want you could actually go into your font and play around with it and say hey what if I want to put a uh, what if I want to put that on there in fact I could even show you very quickly how it's done so you just take your type your um, basically your type tool and then you can go in and see what you can do as far as you know writing in whatever you want let's see let's make this a little bigger so we can see it all right it's just a just a little small so I'll have to make this at least 72 and then whatever font you can find uh, let's see should do something simple like something yeah it looks pretty good uh, this I don't know if this is the exact proportion or the exact thing but you know we can always change it later so we can just put pencil and then change the color obviously because it looks terrible so oops. change the color to blue okay and then what you can oops okay so then what you can do is then you can just there you go. See now you can just kind of put that there. Save as Targa. Save it as a Targa file. Make sure you're saving your PSD file as well, because if you accidentally, if it, if it accidentally crashes, you can always um, get your PSD file back, and then this is what you'll get. Otherwise, if you, if you upload the Targa, um, then it's not going to be very good, because then you'll lose all this. Okay, so go back to jump back into Maya. Go to your Hypershade, make sure you find your um, file that you're working off of, reload, and there you go. So obviously, yeah, it's all, oh, it's you know, backwards, so I'll have to go ahead and fix that. What we'll have to do is flip it, uh, let's see, flip horizontal, there we go, and normal view, so we'll have to just fix that, we'll just have to fix it later. Uh, get that there, okay. So I think this should work. Sorry, this is taking, I know this is a little tedious, but um, just showing you how it works. I, I just want to get this working. So there we go. Okay, well, we can fix the font later. It's obviously just, you know, arbitrary. So, but yeah, there you go. Pretty much it. So any questions, let me know. But yeah, that's pretty much the tutorial. I'll make one more and just finishing it off. So go ahead, see what you can do, play around with it, and uh, yeah, that's about it, so enjoy.